All right, guys, I want to talk about Autos Toro Becker today. Um, Autos Toro Becker is where I bought my box of Astra, and I have kept rather quiet about it because, quite simply, I was giving them the, cho the chance to fix it. They have not fixed one fault on it. In fact, the faults have got worse the longer they've had the vehicle. Originally, it started with a filter fault. It's now developed multiple faults, um, and I know from speaking with Dimitri, uh, when I said to take it to Opal, because these other garages have not fixed anything. His garages, because this is under warranty, they're supposed to fix this for me. Um, first garage he took it to, I think they stole the car battery. The battery clip was broken, and it's not the battery that was in there originally. So, I would say the battery was stolen. Um, this is a two-year-old vehicle. This is a vehicle that hasn't had its first ITB yet, that's how new it is and it's low mileage and yet it has had a lot of damage done to it. The first thing I want to say is it started off with this engine fault and it's to do with the particle filter not um, generating enough uh, heat to clear the, the filter. And the first thing that, what, that I noticed is they said straight away they knew what it was which meant they already had this fault when I got it because they had already cleared it from the computer, I don't guess. Um, but went back, reset it, and they said, oh, it's because it's not driven far enough. We went to Minglanilia. It's a three and a half hour drive there and back. Sorry, there, it's a seven hour drive there and back. Within a day, same fault again. And it slowly went like that, then resetting it. And it progressed from that to now having more problems. Over six weeks ago, I took it back because there was multiple lights coming on now um, relating to the car struggling. It's, it's got multiple issues with it and some strange lights were coming on relating to ABS and things and I'm like, this shouldn't be happening. Um, so I took it back and said, look, there's something wrong with it. Take this to Opal and get them to have a look at it because the garages you're taking to, it seems to be coming back with more and more faults every time you've had the car. So they took it to Opal. Opal recommended a 1,600 euro repair, uh, which should be done because it's under warranty and it was defective before I bought the car. And they were aware some of these faults existed and they're all part and parcel of the same thing. So yes, they should have replaced it. Um, but instead, he took it somewhere else and for 100 euros, they took the the computer control out and reprogrammed it and put it back. Now, what have they done in that programming? I have no idea because I would have I guess he's actually disconnected some of the sensors and stuff on the vehicle so it's not picking up the faults now. Um, I'm going to the UK soon and I will be getting it into Vauxhall there. The reason I'm taking it to Vauxhall and not Opal is I want to get it checked in the UK with people that speak English for a start and I want a full diagnostics and I will put it all here on YouTube. This garage has knowingly been doing this. They, had, the, the funny thing is, even with this fuel thing, they were, you're getting advice from the person who sold it to put this other fuel in that in there to actually push it through the ITVs and stuff and remove the filter. Remove the filter. Um, and that, that's the advice I was getting. Gets to the point six weeks ago, it went in for a repair to re relating to this filter and some of these other lights and it came back with this really noisy engine, like a tractor. They've damaged the injectors. Now bear in mind they had no reason to open this up. Why the hell are the injectors now faulty? Took it back again, they've had it for six weeks and I got it back. None of the faults have been fixed. Engine's still noisy, all the lights are still on. And if anything, I think they've just programmed out some of the issues and not actually fixed anything. The engine's telling me nothing's fixed. The noise of it is telling me nothing's fixed. But on top of that, there's a light on the lower bumper that you can push and it's just doing that. It tells me the, the bumper's been dismantled and taken apart at some point. I think it's been crash damaged. There's no other reason you would actually do that because if you, to get it out, you'd have had to use force, which would have cracked the light. And it's not accessible and it's not going to fall out. It's not in a location that's easy to, to get to either. So it's not as if 
um, a car would have hit it because it's underneath the the front of the bumper is actually protected. You know, the main bumper is is set back. Something's very wrong with this car, and the garage has sold it to me. And as the, the saying goes, they've sold me a lemon. Um, they know it's faulty. They go, oh, we don't know why it's like this. But the one thing they have not done is fix any of the faults on it. Every single fault that was on there is still on there, and it's progressively got worse every time they've had it. Um, I'm now looking at legal action, but I just wanted to go over some of the articles that you can, if you're buying a car in Spain, here's a few things you should be aware of. Article 1474. Meaning that for the sold article car must be the seller's legal property in the first place and they'll be up to the seller to take care of any ratios or hidden defects at the time of sale. These are hidden defects because I know they've reset this computer. Um, the seller will be obligated to take care of the repair of the hidden defects or reimburse the buyer if they prevent the article to be used as it should or it limits the use in the manner that would be the buyer have known he would not have bought the article at only a lower price but the seller will not be responsible for obvious or easily observed effects so for example this computer thing they were aware of because the fact is when somebody's actually telling you remove the filter in there they, they already knew there was a problem with it they cleared all that um, but if, for example, you walk around there's a dent in the wing, you've seen the dent. So you can't go a week later and say, oh, there's a dent in the wing, because you've seen it. Anybody could recognize that. Um, but also you've got to understand, if you're actually from the automotive trade, say you're a car dealer, um, they would expect that you would have picked it up more technical things as well, and that could be used in the defense of the person selling the vehicle saying, well, you're a dealer, you would have, you already knew these issues existed um, because you're a professional and understand this stuff. Um, in that case, you may have a struggle getting them to put right some faults on the vehicle because they turn around and say, you actually know um, what you're doing. Article 14.85, the seller will take care of the repair for reimburse the buyer the repair costs of any hidden defects, even if he was not aware of them. This dis disposition is enforced when the contrary has been argumented and the seller ignores the vicious or hidden defects of the article sold. So this is a case of where the seller takes care of the repair, or hidden defects, even if it was not aware. I assume this, what it's actually saying is that you're looking to force them to get these repairs done. Um, it's a bit vague because it's translated. Um, article 14.86. In view of the previous articles, the buyer can opt to desist the sale contract and return the money paid or demand a partial refund. Yeah, I think some of this translation is back to front between the, the buyer and the seller. Uh, proportion of the previous hidden defect. The technical expert should rule on the relevant proportional amount. The law doesn't mention a window to exercise your right to desist the sale. But under consumer law, that would be 14 days. See, the reason it, it doesn't stay a specific time frame, I assume, is because a lot of these vehicles are under warranty, so there must be a period of time where they turn around and say, like this case, they haven't repaired it. Um, you may have a longer opportunity to repair, return the vehicle because no repairs have been carried out. According to the consumer organization OCOU, the guarantee period on private sales is six months, optionally to be augmented to a full year by an extra insurance policy covering this risk between 200 and 500 euros to be contracted by the buyer. In practice, to prove your case, you would need at least to be a written declaration of a qualified mechanic, and if the seller is not D1 FA, meaning he or she was aware of some of the not so easy detected defects, but choose not to inform the buyer, he will not readily respond to a legal obligation when confronted with a claim about hidden defects the buyer, the buyer and you may have might have to take him to court to get things settled in your favour. So in my case, it looks like I'm going to be going to court and suing them for this car. Um, it's a 7,000 euro car. I mean, it's going to cost me a few thousand euros for the bloody court case, all because of these crooks. Um, it's a bit of a warning for you guys. And I do mention myself that don't buy a second-hand car in Spain. If you don't know its history, I simply would not bother with it at all. I would go no or buy something from the UK, bring it over and trade it, change the place. It may be expensive to change the place, you may drive on the wrong side, but at the same time, a lot of the cars here in Spain 
are absolute lemons. They are they were badly damaged, badly repaired. It's a rose gallery, especially here on the coast. From what I'm well, from my own experience, but also a lot of mechanics are absolute cowboys. Even going to major um, outfits, as a friend of ours, Petter found. She left that garage with a, uh, went in with a fault. It came out with half the engine in the boot of the car and pushed out. Um, that is also another one that's going through legal issues and that was with Noroto. Um, so bear in mind, I would not recommend second hand cars in Spain at all. Unless you're buying from a nice sweet couple that's had the car for the last six years from the United Kingdom. You know them, they, they're a bit more worried about how, what's wrong with their 600 euro car um, that they sell you because they don't want you giving them a bad name rather than these road garages run by people from Eastern European, uh, Europeans etc. They often couldn't care less. Um, anyway, thanks for watching.